Hello, welcome to Pause for Faith. It's good to be with you. For faith. Let me check, excuse me, all oh, the audio and video is coming. I think it is. Great. Look, nice to be with you. Nice to have this time with you, especially if you're watching live, to be able to pray together this evening to keep things very simple. Um, I just thought on Friday it was the Feast of the Sacred Heart, and I was speaking about devotion to the Sacred Heart, and I raced through loads of history, and I spoke about the Litany of the Sacred Heart, thinking we might have time to pray it, but we didn't, and we ran out of time, and I just thought, let's have a little bit of, of prayer together to pray with and for one another, and to be in communion of faith, and to, to honour the Sacred Heart, and just to pray night prayer together as well, so just to keep things very simple this evening. I hope you're well. Um, I'm just thinking of little bits of news to share. The date today, if you're watching live, the 23rd of June, and it's quite significant because we've just heard, haven't we, that um, at last churches and many other places can be open um, on the 4th of July, I think, so in just a couple of weeks' time. And as Christians, we will be able to have, in very careful, controlled ways, acts of public worship. So we've had a a week or so of being able to go back um, to church for private worship and private prayer. It's been very important and it's been lovely hearing priests um, speak about welcoming parishioners back to their parishes and, and speaking to friends and lay people and parishioners about the joy of being able to pray very, very gently, very quietly in the churches that they've been missing for so long for these last three months. But wonderful to know that in a couple of weeks' time, in a, in a gentle, slow way, we'll be able to have some public masses again. Um, and I won't use that phrase back to normal, but it's a really important step step for the country and for, for the church. Of course, some of our students here, the first thing they noticed was, great, I can go to the pub. This is student life. Um, I don't think can you go inside or can you just drink in the beer garden? I'm not sure. Anyway, churches are open, pubs are open. Surely this is good news for all of us. And a nice thing to share, well, a, a sad thing, but a nice thing to share with you. Uh, it's just a coincidence that I'm speaking to you this evening. And this has been um, part of my day. Just if you can kindly pray for um, Professor Audrey Donithorne. Audrey Donithorn, may she rest in peace, who died just a couple of weeks ago in Hong Kong. Audrey is very special for us here at Newman House. She's a very special woman, full stop. And look, I won't try and tell her life story. I will put onto the, the video description here, into the comments or somewhere, some links to some obituaries for Audrey. So if, you, if you'd like to find out more about her, there'll be a link there. Um, she was a, a great, wonderful China specialist, not just in academic circles, but in, in terms of culture and relationships and politics and, and academia um, as well. She was born, incredibly, in a, an Anglican missionary family in Sichuan in China. So she was born in China, learned to speak Chinese when she was a little girl, ended up back in England um, ended up becoming very interested in, in Chinese economics and sociology and religion. Um, she converted to Catholicism. I think it was in Oxford, but I'm not 100% sure about that. We can look it up later. Um, she was teaching here in, in London, in Australia, lots of academic work in China, um, and with lots of moving around over many, many years in her great, great age, um, she was born in 1922 and she's died two weeks ago in 2020, so she's 98 or 99, depending on when her birthday was. So in these last years, she's settled in Hong Kong, um, and I just got a message from her goddaughter here in England, um, just about the sadness of not being able to travel back to the funeral in Hong Kong, but just lots of friends and, and colleagues and um, fellow Catholic parishioners supporting her. So find out about Audrey. Why is she special for Newman House? Here am I. Some of you know this, some of you don't. I'm here in central London at the main student centre for, for the, the ministry of the diocese. 
the diocese, Westminster Diocese, working with students and staff in our universities in central London. This chaplaincy centre is called Newman House. In normal times, you can come and visit. You can pray in our chapel. It's closed now, but normally you can. We are a hall of residence for about 65 students. We are the centre for the, the ministry of, of the chaplaincy, the work of the chaplains, Sunday Mass, all of our student groups and activities, as well as being a hub that, that connects together all the different Catholic work in, in the universities, the chaplains working on campus, the Catholic societies in all the different colleges. It's incredible. In London, as you might know, you might not, there are half a million university students in London. Not exaggerating, half a million university students. There's about 350,000 within the Diocese of Westminster. The rest are in, in Brentwood and Southwark. Um, and with all of our, you know, rough guesses that probably 11, 12 percent of them are Catholic. That's a lot of Catholic students and, and many more Catholic staff, as well as having a heart and reaching out to all the people of different faiths and of, of no faith. So it's a wonderful ministry to be involved in university chaplaincy. And we would not be here without Audrey. Finally getting to the point. Let me read this little, just a paragraph here, written by Bruce Kent, who was in effect our founder. Um, Bruce was the chaplain, the senior chaplain. He was what, what I'm doing now in the early 60s and well, throughout much of the 60s. In 1965, 66, he was really searching hard for a centre, a, a chaplaincy centre in this area of Bloomsbury, close to, to UCL and, and SOAS and, and Birkbeck and the Institute of Education and not too far from some of the colleges like City and Westminster and King's College London and the London School of Economics, etc. This is what he writes. In mid-July 1966, I was asked by Dr Audrey Donithorne to a drinks party in University College to meet other Catholic staff. Audrey wo was both a very traditionalist Catholic and one of the very few staff members who took an interest in student welfare. As we walked out onto Gower Street at the end of the evening, she pointed across the road at a block of four houses where I'm sitting now. And she said to me, to, to Bruce, what a pity the church has just sold those four houses to the university. They would make an excellent chaplaincy. I was looking, says Bruce, at St Teresa's Hostel, run by the Sisters of Charity for so-called working girls at the time. It must have been the sherry rolling around inside me, but I crossed the road, rang the doorbell and asked to see the superior. Monsignors, he was a Monsignor, Monsignors still had clout in those days. And the superior, instead of telling me to get lost in a polite way, gave me the name of their solicitor and told me that after four years of negotiations, the deal with the university was within days of completion. And this is in my own words now. I'm just summarising the story. Bruce was entranced by the place, such an obviously wonderful centre for Catholic students, for very large Georgian houses already knocked through, loads of space, about 75 bedrooms, as well as all the space and the facilities, a yard out the back where eventually a chapel would be built, which is what we have now. Wouldn't this be wonderful? The sisters are just about to sign the contract. They've agreed to sell it to University College London, UCL, which then, as now, is gobbling up every little bit of property it can within a mile of, of the centre here of Gower Street. So Bruce goes to see Cardinal Heenan, the Cardinal Archbishop. The story is that Cardinal Heenan is, is very sick in bed. 
But, but Bruce insists that he sees the house, signs the contract, agrees the deal, and, and within days, if not hours, it's been agreed that instead of selling to UCL, the sisters sell the property to the diocese. And, and that summer, 1966, gosh, yeah, mid-July 66, he found the place. Six weeks later, Bruce and the first students were moving in and basically, we have been here for 54 years running our chaplaincy uh, with a wonderful succession of, of chaplains, of, of sisters, of lay men and women working here, of students, generations of students coming through the chaplaincy. And just what a wonderful, wonderful project this has been and still is. Um, and we would not be here without the, the ministrations of Audrey Donithorne. So we've always had a, a real affection for Audrey. She's kept in touch. I've emailed over the years, even though I've never sadly met her because she's been in Hong Kong. So God have mercy on her soul. May he forgive her her sins. May he reward her for her good deeds and her love and charity, one of which was pointing us to Newman House and securing that for us. Let's pray together. Let's just say a prayer for Audrey. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. And the last bit of the story. So um, I was speaking by email to Audrey's goddaughter, who is her next of kin, her treated as her next of kin. And um, I said... I will offer mass for Audrey, went into chapel this evening, opened up the missal. Now, I knew it was the feast of St. Etheldreda because we have the chapel ready for that mass. And I'd said morning prayer and office of readings this morning in honour of St. Etheldreda. And I open up the missal for, to celebrate mass this evening. And it says today is the, the memoria, the feast day of St. Etheldreda, brackets, Audrey, which I didn't know, or I'd forgotten I knew. Audrey, it seems, is an English form, modern English form, of the, the Anglo-Saxon word Etheldreda, name Etheldreda. So isn't that a lovely coincidence? I walk into the chapel today to say Mass for the repose of the soul of Audrey, and it is the Feast of St Audrey. So I had the celebration of Mass, the sacrifice offered for her, and then to have a little prayer to St Audrey at the end. St Audrey, pray for us. OK, there's little bits of, of news and, and chat, and it's nice to have some unrushed time to share with you. Let's pray together. This is looking back to Friday, to the litany, to the Feast of the Sacred Heart. And... Um, I'm not going to comment on it, but just with all of our litanies, in fact, with all of our litanies, that each phrase of the litany, each each title, in this case, a, an, an honour that we're giving to the heart of Jesus, a title for the heart of Jesus, each of these phrases is very, very um, carefully chosen and full of weight and meaning. And you could spend an hour, a week, meditating on each of the phrases and looking at its biblical roots and what its meaning is. And, and the danger with litanies is that we race through them too quickly and we don't appreciate them. But as I say, I don't want to comment on this. I want to pray with you. But I'll try and pray and read quite slowly and for you to join in the response, but just to really appreciate the weight and the depth of what it means to pray to the heart of Jesus. As I was explaining in my video from Thursday night, you can look that up if you want, but also to pray to each of these titles. Please join me in praying now. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let's just um, sit and settle together If you're here in the UK, in, in my time zone, near the end of the evening now, 
just to be aware of possibly the busyness of the day and our minds and hearts needing to settle and to be quiet. And let's be aware of the presence of God. The prayer of recollection, of remembrance. And let's be conscious of praying with each other, scattered throughout the world now, connected by this live stream or by watching the video later on. Let's be aware of the whole church, the mystical body of Christ, united in faith and hope and charity. Let's be aware of all Christians praying wherever they are at this moment. Let's be aware of all the needs of the church and of the world, especially of those who suffer in any way and pray with and for them. The Litany of the Sacred Heart. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. And the response to each title, to each invocation is have mercy on us. So if you can pray that at home, just after I've announced, each of the titles, each of the invocations. Have mercy on us. God, our Father in heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, Son of the Eternal Father, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, formed by the Holy Spirit in the womb of the Virgin Mother, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, one with the Eternal Word, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, infinite in majesty, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, Holy Temple of God, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, Tabernacle of the Most High, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, House of God and Gate of Heaven, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, a flame with love for us, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, Source of Justice and Love, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, full of goodness and love, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, wellspring of all virtue, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, patient and full of mercy, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, generous to all who turn to you, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, Fountain of life and holiness, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, source of healing, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, sharer in our sorrow, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, safeguarder of the vulnerable, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, friend of the betrayed, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, companion of the ignored, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, face of the misjudged, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, memory of the disbelieved, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, true voice in the silence, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, wounded by our failings, have mercy on us. 
heart of Jesus, bearer of our sufferings, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, acquainted with grief, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, atonement for our sins, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, overwhelmed with insults, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, broken for our sins, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, obedient even to death, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, pierced by a lance, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, source of all consolation, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, our life and resurrection, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, our peace and reconciliation, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, victim for our sins, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, salvation of all who trust in you, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, hope of all who die in you, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, delight of all the saints, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Jesus, gentle and humble of heart, touch our hearts and make them like your own. Let us pray. Father, we honour the heart of your Son, broken by man's cruelty, yet symbol of love's triumph, pledge of all that man is called to be. Teach us to see Christ in the lives we touch, to offer him living worship by love-filled service to our brothers and sisters. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. If you'd like to pray with me, um, night prayer. And if it's the morning in America or wherever you are, you can pray your night prayer early today. We'll call this morning prayer. So we pray together the night prayer of the prayer of the church. O God, come to our aid. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We pause for a moment at the end of the day. We thank God for his many blessings and we ask forgiveness for any sins we have committed. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Abide with me, fast falls the eventide. The darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, Help of the helpless, O oh, abide with me. Swift to its close ebbs out life's little day. Earth's joys grow dim, its glories pass away. Change and decay in all around I see. O thou who changest not, abide with me. Hold thou thy cross before my closing eyes. Shine through the gloom and point me to the skies. 
heaven's morning breaks and earth's vain shadows flee. In life, in death, O Lord, abide with me. The Psalms now from Night Prayer. Do not hide your face from me, for in you have I put my trust. Psalm 142. Lord, listen to my prayer. Turn your ear to my appeal. You are faithful, you are just, give answer. Do not call your servant to judgment, for no one is just in your sight. The enemy pursues my soul, he has crushed my life to the ground. He has made me dwell in darkness, like the dead, long forgotten. Therefore my spirit fails, my heart is numb within me. I remember the days that are past, I ponder all your works. I muse on what your hand has wrought, and to you I stretch out my hands, like a parched land, my soul thirsts for you. Lord, make haste and answer, for my spirit fails within me. Do not hide your face, lest I become like those in the grave. In the morning let me know your love, for I put my trust in you. Make me know the way I should walk, to you I lift up my soul. Rescue me, Lord, from my enemies. I have fled to you for refuge. Teach me to do your will, for you, O Lord, are my God. Let your good spirit guide me in ways that are level and smooth. For your name's sake, Lord, save my life in your justice. Save my soul from distress. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Do not hide your face from me, for in you have I put my trust. The scripture reading from the first letter of St Peter. Be calm but vigilant, because your enemy the devil is prowling round like a roaring lion looking for someone to eat. Stand up to him, strong in faith. Into your hands, Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, Lord, I commend my spirit. You have redeemed us, Lord God of truth. Into your hands, Lord, I commend my spirit. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, Lord, I commend my spirit. Save us, Lord, while we are awake. Protect us while we sleep, that we may keep watch with Christ and rest with him in peace. At last, all-powerful Master, you give leave to your servant to go in peace according to your promise. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all nations, the light to enlighten the Gentiles and give glory to Israel, your people. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Save us, Lord, while we are awake. Protect us while we sleep, that we may keep watch with Christ and rest with him in peace. Let us pray. In your mercy, Lord, dispel the darkness of this night. Let your household so sleep in peace, that at the dawn of a new day, they may with joy waken in your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. And we sing to our Blessed Mother at the end of the evening. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Dulcedo, Et spes nostra salve. A te clamamus, exules filii eve. A te suspiramus, gementes et flentes, in hac lacrimarum vale. Ea ergo, advocata nostra, 
He loves to host misericordes oculos ad nos converte. Et Jesum benedictum fructum ventris tui, nobis post hoc exilium hostem dei. O oh, oh, clemens, O oh, 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 pia, O oh, 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 dulcis virgo maria. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Amen. Our Lady Seat of Wisdom, pray for us. Saint John Henry Newman, pray for us. Saint Etheldreda, Saint Audrey, pray for us. Saint John the Baptist, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for being with me and for being with one another. Thank you for praying together. Um, I think if you're watching live tomorrow, Wednesday and Thursday, I've got different Zoom meetings. So there's no live tomorrow and Thursday night, hopefully on Friday night. And we'll be doing some streaming tomorrow and hopefully Thursday and Friday mornings. So the key is always looking on the um, Pause for Faith Facebook page. Pause for Faith. Just look up. Pause for Faith on Facebook and the YouTube channel here. I'll always put the live video up at least a couple of hours before we go live. So you can check there of when we're able to live stream. And if not, to look at some of the older videos. Nice to be with you. God bless. See you.